We are now going to talk about the physical pendulum, and I think it's helpful to distinguish between two types of pendula. One is the simple pendulum, and that's what we've already talked about, where you have a mass on a stick or a string, where we think about the stick or string as being massless, and this ball as being small in radius and having a significant mass. So effectively, this is a point or a particle model, where there's just a point mass here, some distance away from a pivot point. This is our simple pendulum. We usually just call it the pendulum. Now, a physical pendulum is actually coming from a rigid body mo model. That in this case, there's some fixed pivot point that is not at the center of mass. And in that case, that means that gravity acting at the center of mass is actually causing it to rotate. So a physical pendulum, you must use the rigid body mo model, where for a simple pendulum, you can use the particle model. So we need to think about what's going on here since the physics is a little bit different. So because we're talking about the rigid body model, you probably want to start with rotation and thinking about torque, right? That we're talking about a pivot point here and the center of mass some distance away. So that looks like torque. Now remember that there are different ways of thinking about torque. And one was thinking about the distance that is perpendicular to your force between where the force is applied and the pivot point. So in this case, the torque from the force of gravity acting at the center of mass is equal to mg, where that's the force of gravity, your force, times d, where that is your moment arm. So the, the distance in the x direction from your center of mass and the Remember that the minus sign is coming from the coordinate definition, that d is a positive value here because your center of mass is to the right of your pivot point. But if you think about which way gravity is then going to make this object rotate, it's clockwise, and clockwise is negative. So that's why there's a minus sign here. So now let's expand that in terms of theta. So d is just going to be this length here, the distance from the pivot to center of mass times sine theta. And the reason we want to do that is that as it rotates, d is going to be changing. It's also going to become negative when this whole object has rotated to be on the other side. But L is fixed, L is constant, so we can now express theta as impacting our torque. So once again, we notice that we have a sine theta here. This is possibly going to be a problem, but we can now use the small angle approximation, which I'm, as a physicist, I make really bad acronyms. So small angle approximation, you might think should be SAA, but now I'm gonna call it apparently SMA. So what we've done is said that sine theta is approximately equal to theta. So keep in mind that if I'm doing that, I can only be talking about small oscillations, not big swings here. So then what? Now, remember that torque is related to moments of inertia i and alpha, our angular acceleration. And angular acceleration is also going to be defined as the second derivative of angle with respect to time. So now what you see is I have an angular acceleration that I can relate back to torque. Right here, we're not talking about forces because we're talking about rotation. So I haven't defined what my moment of inertia is, I, that's okay, because we're talking about this in general. This might look like a specific type of object, but it could be a much more complicated object. This is how you would model, for instance, people perhaps swinging on a, a, one of those hanging wooden uh, chairs or something. So this could be, have a really complicated moment of inertia. So let's try to get this to the form of simple harmonic motion. I've said that my angular acceleration, which is my second derivative, is equal to tau, torque, over moment of inertia. And I've said my torque, as long as I'm dealing with small angles, relates to negative force of gravity, the length of uh, between my center of mass and the pivot point, and then theta. So the first thing you should ask yourself is, do I have a linear restoring force? If you do, it can be modeled as simple harmonic motion. If you don't, it cannot be. So the linear restoring force is here because this is your position and there's, it depends on theta. It doesn't depend on square root of theta or theta squared. And so you have a force that depends on your position 
it's restoring because you have a minus sign and then there's just some proportionality of three constants multiplied together. So this looks like a linear restoring force. We then plug it in for, for tau and we're left with this form. Now again, your goal here is to recognize when you know how to solve a differential equation by writing down what the solution is. I have the second derivative of a coordinate, in this case theta, with respect to time. It equals to minus, that's good, a group of constants times theta itself. This is the form you need, right? That the form we talked about before was, for instance, d squared of u over dt squared equals negative some constant u. That's exactly what I have, where u is theta and the c is mgl over i. So what that means is this is solved with our sinusoidal form, where again I could express that in terms of arc length if I wanted. Here I'm going to do it in terms of theta since that's what I started with. So we have a maximum angle that it swings to. We have our angular frequency and our phase constant. Again, remember, this isn't a physical angle. This is a mathematical angle of where it is in the sinusoidal motion. And this is going to be determined by initial conditions. Omega is now equal to just the square root of all this nonsense. Keep in mind the minus sign is always out front. Don't take a square root of a minus sign because then you get in imaginary numbers and that's bad in physics class. So it depends on the mass of the object times gravitational constant times the length, again, between the pivot point and your center of mass, not the length of the entire object, divided by the moment of inertia. Now, one caveat here is that this moment of inertia depends on the shape, but is usually going to have the form of some constant, right? So some numerical constant times m times, for instance, some length squared or radius squared. M always appears in the moment of inertia. And so because of that, you actually are going to have M cancel on top with that. So really, your moment of inertia is going to be um, G over G times L times some sort of numerical value. And again, L squared, where this is a different L, maybe it's a radius, but some sort of length that describes your object. So mass does cancel out, but that's because mass is embedded within the moment of inertia. So again, the physical pendulum, as long as we're talking about a small angle of motion, again, is going to have simple harmonic motion because the force of gravity acting not at the pivot point gives you a restoring force.